As a photographer, I've had the pleasure of taking some great portraits. There's just something about nailing the composition of a scene, getting that lighting just right, and pressing that shutter button that makes me just smile from ear to ear. In all honesty, I never thought I'd get that same feeling that I have with physical photography that I ended up getting with virtual photography. But as I set up the lighting, composed the scene, and got the models posed, added the effects, then took the first picture, I found that I had that same grin back on my face when I looked at the end results. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a little series I like to call the Blender Discourse Course, an extended mini series that serves to document the various shenanigans that I have encountered throughout my time relearning Blender. I'm not going to ask you to like or subscribe or anything today. I just wanted to show off this cool set of images that I decided to make just to push myself into making different various effects in Blender because I wanted to figure out how to make smoke and gas and cool nighttime atmospheres throughout the entire time that I was working in Blender, but I never got around to doing it. But today felt different, so I decided to do something different. Well, with that part being said, I do have a confession to make. This video is kind of out of order. When I started making these videos and putting the list together, this video was actually number five out of 10 that I had ready to go. But because of um, this little shenanigan that I have encountered called character animation, you can watch my previous video on that. I decided to push video four to video whichever number it comes out at because yeah, animation is difficult. I found it a lot easier to pick some characters that I was actually familiar with for the start of this entire course, but then I realized, despite me being familiar with these characters, I still have a lot of stuff to actually learn. I'm talking about the Street Fighter video that I wanted to do character animations for. Yeah, those poses are very difficult to do, so I'm going to actually just take my time with that one. And I might end up posting all the animations as a separate entity. I have one done already, but I'm going to save that one for another video. That little confession aside. I still had a lot of fun working with this entire scene. This scene was pretty good and a fairly mild challenge for me. I kind of knew I was going to be able to do it, but I still had a lot of stuff that could have gone wrong and still kind of did go wrong. And you'll see a lot of that throughout this entire video. But in all honesty, that's the whole reason I have this series to document my shenanigans. And funny enough, this might not be the last set of Ahsoka images or animations that I make. We'll see though. Funny enough, one of the biggest problems that I ended up encountering the very first time that I got into the scene was posing the models. I forgot that the rigs were slightly different for both the Soka models, but it wasn't really the biggest problem in the world. The biggest problem came with me trying to figure out how to get the smoke emissions that I needed for the scene. Turns out there's a Blender add-on for that that I didn't know about until after I was done with this video. Didn't know that, so I didn't think about using it. But what I ended up using was a asset from another scene. It was a thruster emitter that kind of worked for what I needed it to. I just needed to just make some tweaks to the animation. Once I made the tweaks to the animation, I realized that I was going to have to redo the lightsabers because they weren't coming out of the model right, which was so weird, but you know, whatever. I put the lightsabers together and then I put the thruster right under the entire scene. The thruster didn't work the way I needed it to in the first place, but I still kept it just in case I was able to get some cool scattering effects. But then by the time I added all the lights, the effect was going to be super cluttered. I kind of made that work, but by the time I added all of the extra debris and other effects, it kind of just got all over the place. And then the light kept scattering and bouncing off of the particles. So I had to figure out which particles I needed to turn off. A statement that I never thought I would have ever said if I was not just completely in Blender for 24 hours a day at this point. But you know, still, it kind of worked. Another thing that ended up working was me getting all of the models that I needed for a little bit of a uh, swarm animation. That was kind of what I wanted to do. It didn't work the way I wanted it to, but Eh, I kept everything behind the stage, so you don't even get to see any of that in the final product. I spent all this time trying to figure out how the props work and which props ca I can use for this entire scene, but it didn't work the way I needed it to, and I just had to pose everything myself. I thought at the end of the day I could make a swarm animation that I could just render out and then pause in the middle of at maybe like frame 35 or something, and then just take that picture. But no, I had to manually pose all of these props and the debris fortunately for me the debris that i got from cg trader 
was, uh, you know, pretty good. It turns out I needed to do a little bit of extra tweaking for some of these, but the objects all in all really ended up coming out the way I needed them to. So I was really satisfied with it. It's funny that the green pieces ended up looking like kryptonite to me because I had to color them green. They were supposed to be glass shards. The glass shards, they kind of looked good, but something else was missing. And I realized it was just some foreground elements. So after I was done checking out the renders and seeing how everything looked, I just decided to why not copy and paste some more stuff, which is kind of what this entire scene turned into, especially after I got the cameras repositioned the way I wanted them to. I was throwing debris all over the place. I threw some lights all over the place too, but at the end of the day, that's kind of how I ended up working with a lot of things. Funny enough here, posing all of this stuff and getting all of the assets that I really needed to get, that more or less reminded me of how I operate through certain scenes while I am working with other clients during my actual photography jobs. Usually I'll have all the models in place and then we'll figure out what props we need if we need any props and then get everybody in order get all the lighting in order and funny enough we'll just start throwing some props around just to see what the scene looks like and that's kind of what I ended up doing here which was super fun because again like I said at the very beginning of the video I didn't realize that I was going to enjoy virtual photography like this as much as I ended up enjoying it because usually you have to tweak settings you have to jump around and figure out how certain things come together and it is more or less the exact same thing in a 3d environment especially in blender when you have almost absolute control over everything and you just have to make sure everything comes together you'll take a couple of renders or a couple of test shots figure out what you need to fix figure out what you need to fix again and then figure out what you need to fix again and then try not to delete anything until you are sure that's what you wanted to fix and then boom there you go and also you check the camera settings and all of that other good stuff but overall i had a good time with it <laughs> figuring out how to render everything the way i needed it to or just finding the small little pieces of mistakes in the background was very fun. You might think it's irritating, but again, if you think of it as a learning experience instead, you'll start having a little bit more fun with it. Or you might actually go insane because I'm not sure where the line actually stops. And so here are some of the final products. I had a couple of different camera angles, but I only used two. And I really liked how they came out, it's especially this one. This is a real good hero shot. And then the closer one it shows off the background too. I really liked all that. I love the backlighting. I love the scattering of the shots. After I finished these main camera angles, I decided to go back and set the camera angles to vertical. And I ended up getting some nice vertical shots too. These show off more of the bodies and the background is a little bit more concealed, but the lighting is really good too. I like how these came out as well. When I posted them, I immediately decided, yeah, I'm going to have to set one of these as my wallpaper in the next few weeks. With all that being said, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe as well and check out the rest of my blender playlist because i am going to continue to add to that for a while until i decide not to or my computer blows up whichever one comes first